they were like, yeah, but we're really, really concerned about the fact that the Taliban doesn't have enough female leaders. I'm like, you idiots do realize these are the people that are going door to door, raping 12 year olds like that. I'm not saying that female having no female leadership in a country is something that is necessarily a good thing. I'm just saying that like when you got people going door to door, raping 12 year olds and burning Christians alive, maybe this is not at the top of your priority list. Hey, fellow tacticians, be sure to like this video and subscribe and ring that little notification bell that supports this channel's conservative content, which is good for me, good for you, good for America, but really bad for the dark cyber overlords at YouTube. That was stupid. I know it was stupid. Really stupid. Hey, I just said it was stupid. Our second daily dose of stupid, and this isn't going to be a long one, but I did have to mention it because I found it kind of sad, but hilarious at the same time. I mean, it's not funny what they're doing, but it is funny how their priorities are so backwards. Like you, you can't, you can't look at this and not see how they don't see it. So this is a tweet from our State Department earlier this week. I can go ahead and pull it up. There we go. So this is this is the official State Department Twitter. Today on International Pronouns Day, <laughs> we share why many people list pronouns on their email and social media profiles. Read more here, and it takes you to an article that the State Department put together about why Americans list their pronouns like she, him, and they, her, and Z, Zir, and, um, you know, uh, Peach Cobbler, and Jupiter Gender, and all that other nonsense. I'm so glad that the State Department's priorities are in the right place. Because, you know, with everything that's going on with China basically looking like they're going to invade Taiwan any day now, and with Russia annexing Crimea and trying to take over the Ukraine, and both being our biggest geopolitical adversaries by a long shot and, and mounting military power and you know Russia trying to take over the energy sector for the entirety of Europe. It's good to know that the State Department is working on the real issues like this and, and not on other things or you know elections or anything of that nature. Even if you're on the left, genuine question here. Even if you are on the left, do you not see that this is not something the State Department should be doing? I, I genuinely want to know that because the State Department, I don't see how this has anything to do with foreign policy, how it in any way affects our foreign relations with other countries. Why is the State Department wasting its time on useless crap like this when it could be doing something of actual productive value? That's what I don't get here. I mean, at the end of the day, does them tweeting out about this bother me because I think that it's wrong and stupid? Sure, I, I, I would say that. But even if it wasn't something that I thought was stupid, like let's say um, they were talking about, I don't know, the farm bill or something like that. Why would the State Department be talking about that? That's not within their wheelhouse. I, I mean, heck, if they were talking about something like religious freedom, something that I'm very much for, I would be kind of like, but it's the State Department. And if they were talking about it for another country, maybe that would be something that would be within their, their area of expertise. But why is the State Department talking about this anyway? I, I don't understand how this is something that is positive, especially since they were talking about it in the context of, well, you know, some people put it on their email and social media. You guys are the State Department. What, what are you doing wasting your time with dumb crap like this? And I can tell, the thing is, it's not a mystery. I can tell you why people post pronouns on their email and their social media profile. All it is is a virtue signal. Do you know that I've never actually seen somebody on social media who their pronouns didn't fit their biological gender? I mean, you have to remember that the trans community is like 0.2% of the entire American population. You know, it's not at all uncommon for me to scroll through and like, Anywhere from a third to a half of the people that I go through on my newsfeed have their pronouns listed on there. And every single time, it's just the pronoun that you would expect because it's either him, her for a guy or she, or she, her for a, a girl or whatever. Whatever the standard one is. You know, he, him or, or she, her, I guess. Um, but whenever that is the case, 
It's always just a normal person with normal pronouns. They're doing it to signal to other people, oh, I'm, in, I'm inside the woke community. I'm one of you. That's all it is. It's just a signal to other leftists that I'm on board with the whole trans thing. And so it's, it's not useful. It's not something that, you know, to make a big deal out of. All it is is leftist high-fiving one another. That's really, at the end of the day, all that it is. So, you know, I solved the mystery State Department. You can stop worrying about it. I just told you why they do this. And what's funny is this is the same State Department that just a few weeks ago when the Taliban was taking over Afghanistan. They were like, yeah, but we're really, really concerned about the fact that the Taliban doesn't have enough female leaders. I'm like, you idiots do realize these are the people that are going door to door raping 12 year olds like that. I, I'm not saying that female having no female leadership in a country is something that is necessarily a good thing. I'm just saying that, like, when you got people going door to door raping 12 year olds and burning Christians alive, maybe this is not at the top of your priority list. And maybe you shouldn't really be surprised when they're not like, you know what, we really do need to have a female on the, <laughs> in the governing body here when this is how they treat women. Like, maybe deal with the bigger issue here. Can we please have some level of, of perspective or a sense of, of priorities here? But the State Department can't do that because they have their head shoved so far up their butt when it comes to this woke stuff that they want to treat these people, which are essentially 8th century bloodthirsty savages as though they're somebody that they can deal with in the modern world that if they, we just sat down and reasoned with them that they would be able to to have female leadership uh no if you're encouraging people to go around raping 12 year olds i think that your sensibilities when it comes to that issue are a little far gone and we're going to have to do a little bit more groundwork before we get you to the level where we can talk about having some females in leadership positions call me crazy but i think that that is a correct assessment of what is going on here. And to that point with what's going on in, in Afghanistan, when the State Department could actually be worried about the absolute disaster that that is, instead of posting things about why people have pronouns on their social media, this is a headline from Reuters while that is going on. Taliban praises suicide bombers and offers families cash and land. The Taliban praised suicide bombers who died during war against the former government, in other words, the government that we helped set up, and its Western allies, by the way, that would be us, and offered their families sums of cash and promises of land, the movement's interior ministry said in a statement. I'm not even going to pretend to be able to pronounce that name. The acting interior minister, who has a 10 million U.S. bounty on his head, as a specially designated global terrorist, met the families at a ceremony in the Intercontinental Hotel in Kabul, uh, Kabul, which was itself targeted by suicide bombers in 2018. Official photographs of the meeting on Tuesday obscured his face. In his speech, the minister praised the jihad and sacrifices of the martyrs, and uh, Mujai Mahidin, I don't know, and called them heroes of Islam and the country, the minister said in a statement on Twitter. Now, I want you to notice that. Before we get into the content of what he's actually saying, notice at the end of that, this was a public statement on Twitter. They are so bold and so brazen and so convinced that the American military is not going to do anything to stop them, regardless of what they say. They are saying this publicly on Twitter, an American media company. This is a social media network that is based in America. They know that they're going to see it. And they're so convinced that the State Department or the military is not going to do a darn thing about it that they don't have a problem with posting it in a public place like this. And considering that this is going on while our State Department is tweeting out about gender pronouns, I think that the Taliban is 100% right on that. Think about this. This is the newly reformed Taliban, remember? where Jin Psaki was telling us how businesslike and professional that they are and how they're, they're willing to work with us and how we're going to have to trust the Taliban on some of these things. Yeah, when you're giving money and cash rewards to people that are suicide bombing people just for being American or even their own people for helping Americans, 
that's not a person you can reason with or have a working relationship with. And yet, the Biden administration is kidding themselves, thinking that they can reason with these people. These people, as I said, are 8th century savages. They understand exactly one thing. When Trump dropped a Moab in the middle of their backyard, we didn't really have any problems out of them. Because they were terrified that the next one was going to be on their heads. Unfortunately, because of who these people are and the way that they live, the threat of intimate, uh, intimate death intimate death, uh, imminent death, is the only thing they actually understand. And this shows that. For the evil that they are, they are committed to the cause. They do believe that anybody that helps America is evil and deserves to be suicide bombed. And they praise the suicide bombers that do it. And the truth is, this is not a problem that is only existing in the Taliban. Lest you think that, oh, well, this is just the Taliban that's doing these crazy things, praising suicide bombers and martyrs, um, and, and really the poor Afghan people uh, are being really sort of run roughshod over. Okay, first of all, the reason the Taliban operates in Afghanistan is because they find that there's lots of people there that they can recruit that agree with them. And a Pew poll found that over 40% of the average Afghan actually approves of suicide bombings and thinks that it's a good thing. And so the idea that this is just a, a tiny minority of outliers, and it's not, the reason that we couldn't bring a stable government to the Afghan people is because they want to be ruled by Sharia law. They want a religious theocracy where the book of the Quran is their law. That's what they want. You cannot force freedom on people that don't want it. These people want to be enslaved. They want to live the way that the Quran tells them to live, which is in slavery. They don't want freedom, and we can't make them want it. They have to want it for themselves. When we obtained our freedom, we fought off our tyrants with guns. We were willing to die for it. They're willing to die for the opposite. They're willing to die to preserve their own tyranny. And you can't really do a whole lot with that. I know it's sad. I know it's unfortunate. I hate the fact that there are people that want to live this way. It saddens me. It really does. That somebody that is an image bearer of God, one of his children, does not understand his blessings or want to, to be a part of that. But that's who these people are. And we can't just deal with the world the way that we wish that it were. We have to deal with the world as it is. And the simple fact is the reason that the Taliban had this much success, the reason they were able to take over the country in such a short amount of time, is because these people are 8th century savages that want to live in a theocracy run by the teachings of Muhammad. And when that's what they want, we could come in and stabilize it, which we did for 20 years, but we cannot make those people establish a government for themselves that respects human rights and liberty. We can't do it. We can't make them do it. And that's the thing that the Biden administration doesn't understand. They, they want to act like the Taliban is just, you know, a handful of, you know, somewhat reasonable because now they're reformed. But just, you know, a handful of radicals that are the problem. And really, the people are good. No, the people are not good. The people are, are like an ancient Canaanite nation. And, you know, can, can we do work? Are there good people there? Are there people that might accept the message of Christ and change their life around? And yes, I'm a missionary. I believe that. I'm just saying, as the country is now, we cannot deal with them in the manner in which we wish that they were. We have to deal with them as they actually are. And what they actually are is a country that largely supports terrorism and thinks that it's a good thing. I wish that it were not the case, but it is. <laughs> This is usually the part of the video where I ask you to like this video and subscribe to my show and click the notification bell. Does that guarantee you're going to get notifications when I post new content? Honestly, the way that YouTube censors conservatives, I really doubt it. But you know what liking and subscribing does do, for sure? It ticks off the dark cyber overlords at Google when they see those likes and subscriptions despite shadow banning my conservative content. 
So you really should like and subscribe, if nothing else, just to stick it to them.